Welcome to Trains 21. In addition to this YouTube channel, you can also find us online at trains21.org and trains21.com. Um, to the administrator, I mean, how long can a train be? I have trains now running up the Willamette Valley that are 15,000 feet long, going through city centers. Uh, how long are we going to allow people to block emergency vehicles? Uh, there's, these are mostly at-grade crossings. I mean, is there any limit to how long they can make these trains? The man that you just heard was Peter DeFazio of the Oregon State U.S. House of Representatives, 4th District, speaking about his concerns over precision scheduled railroading at a House committee hearing on June 20, 2019. Born in Massachusetts and an Air Force veteran like myself, Mr. DeFazio makes rock-solid statements about the many problems that are associated with PSR. And while I'm no fan of Mr. DeFazio, the issues he points out cannot be denied, whether you support PSR or not. 7285 7285 to the TNDNS 4145 4145 South SAUTH Checkbox 2 proceed from CP 699 699 <laughs> Precision scheduled railroading is the hot railroading topic of the day. And whether you support PSR or savage PSR, the effect that it's having on railroading can't be denied. I'm Railfan AC, and you're watching Trains in the 21st Century. It's September 20, 2020, and summer is officially over. At Steamtown, the parking lot is near empty, but a few scattered visitors are still making their way over the makeshift gravel walkway that temporarily replaced the boardwalk to the right that was undergoing repair. Looking toward the Y, some light Delaware Lackawanna power is waiting to move on to the Norfolk Southern Sunbury Line and down to Taylor to do their daily work. The holdup is this massive southbound train 11Z that separated and went into emergency. To the north, we can see the train stretching up and into the Endless Mountains region. The separation took place behind the tree line just out of view from our vantage point. If you happen to be a new viewer to this channel, let me share something with you that the rest of us have known for a while. The 10 mile long grade from Taylor to Clark Summit is our main headache on this line. And whether the trains are going up or down, the 1.4% gradient has been responsible for more stalled trains, separations, and other railroad mishaps than really I care to report on. Today's adventure begins at our usual spot where the day's Enola Bound 11Z made its way through town. Since full-blown PSR went into effect, the freight was moved around, several through freights were abolished, and what trains remain have morphed from manageable, maintainable manifests into multi-mile giants that routinely stretch between 10,000 and 15,000 feet.
getting up there. You got to check it out there, Brennan. Although the break in the train happened to the north of us, we're heading south. Along the way, we pass a big construction project taking place right next to the main line. Most of this massive concrete structure is below ground level, and although I don't know what purpose it serves, it's similar to two that were built on the Delaware Lackawanna, Carbondale, and Pocono main lines. At milepost 671.6, we find the three locomotive lasher resting on the Luzerne Street overpass. And in the spirit of the Christmas season, here's a shot that I took of a Canadian Pacific train moving northbound way back in December of 2003, just a few days before Christmas. This train was a big hit and even made the pages of Railpace, a monthly Northeastern railroading publication. Getting in closer, we can get an up-close and personal look at the power of today's steel centipede. Two recently converted DC to ACs bracket a DC Jeeva. And despite what it says on the cab, the 7539 is actually an ES44 DC. All 40 DCs having been notched up to 4400 horsepower around 2015. The sun is hitting the train directly from the front, making the lighting on the engineer side of the train no better than the lighting on the conductor side of the train. The 4145 is a uniquely rare catch. It was rebuilt from the very first wide cab Dash 9 on the Norfolk Southern, the 8889. We talked about the 8889 and the future of NS's remaining Dash 9 fleet in great detail in video T167. There's a link to that video in the description box and in the pinned comment, just in case you missed it. The 4223 was rebuilt from the wide cab Dash 9 number 8927. Both ACs on this train had their makeovers performed at the GE Wabtec plant in Fort Worth, Texas, while the DC unit was born in March of 2007.
Because I didn't spend any time at the separation point of the train, I never found out how bad the situation was. What I do know is that help for the conductor came down from Binghamton and the engineer had to make several back and forth moves up and down the grade before the train was properly connected back together. This made for some awesome start up and shoving sound. By the time that all of the back and forth shuffling took place and all of the King's horses and all of the King's men got Humpty Dumpty back together again, the day's northbound train 14R was in the picture so the engineer gave up his track authorities to Nescopec and the two trains wound up meeting at the siding at Hanover, milepost 697 to 699, almost 30 miles down the line. I've said it in other videos, welcome to the new normal of Class 1 Mainline Railroading. For Trains 21, call me AC.